Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Raw. And for this week's one, it's all about a challenge. And it was a challenge that I set myself, but I didn't realize how tough that challenge was going to be. So I went to a location that I hadn't been to actually before, and it was blazing sun. So I said, okay, can I get a shot here in these harsh conditions? And I set myself the challenge of getting some long exposure shots. Now, of course, I'd need to use my filters in relation to that but I also had to be super conscious of the waves that were coming through because they were coming close to, quite close to me and also the sky now it's one thing to expose for the sky it's another thing to try and get a long exposure and it's the third thing is that when the sun is reflecting off the water in front of you it can make it very very difficult nonetheless I still think I was successful and I managed to get a couple of shots that I kind of like from the shoot but overall it was a good lesson and a good challenge as well that maybe you could do as well if you haven't seen that episode I linked to it up here I'd love for you to come and watch it but now what we're going to do is we're going to try and edit an image from this challenge and not only was shooting it a challenge but editing it was a challenge as well and I decided to go down a totally different route on editing that I hadn't done on this behind the raw series before so I kind of wanted to make sure that it was quite moody and I've gone for a very cold edit as well and I'll talk you through into Lightroom here as usual my thought process my editing and my workflow what I like what I don't like so let's jump on the computer and we'll talk you through from there let's go So now coming into Lightroom, as you can see here, there's one major flaw straight away with the image is that it is not straight on the horizon. And I'm always a big proponent of get it right when you're out in the field. But on this occasion, I was moving back and forth and trying different settings. And I said, OK, I'm going to test it. And it just so happened that this one was the one that worked out. So the first thing I'm going to do is straighten that horizon. So if I come in here and I look at my um, prop, First and foremost, anyway, I'd say, okay, I'll leave it the way it is right now and I'll tell you why in a moment. But we're going to straighten out this horizon first and foremost. So using the grid lines, you can just utilize those and it's going to tell you if your image is straight. Now, I want to be very conscious is that I want as much information down here because when I was composing the shot, I wanted to utilize this curvature as you'll see when I start to brighten up the image as well in a moment but this now I think is straightened the second thing I want to do is now look at my uh, overall crop and this is where it becomes quite challenging because as you can see here in relation to the sky it is quite bright now the sun had gone behind the cloud which was giving me the opportunity to get the longer exposure and when it was not behind the cloud I was getting a reflection of the water around here so okay what we're going to do is we're going to change this and we're going to go into a 16.9 crop so with a 16.9 crop now we're going to pull this down here and if you notice that it's quite tight in relation to the sky so I want to expand that out as much as I can uh, not losing any of the detail in the bottom so this will give me as much space as I can get and I think that's nice now because you have enough sky visible this bright part is out of the image and if I'm to uh, close out that crop you have all the detail here in the front which is what I'm looking for so the next thing I want to do is go through my basic panel now I've gone through my general settings that I would do on previous episodes of these so I'm not going to spend much time on that I'm just going to give you an idea of what I'm going to put in so uh, first and foremost I want to change my white balance and I want to have a 5300 white balance now this is me recanting this to you guys here I've already edited this image so I've taken a note of my process because it took me a long time to go back and forth in what I wanted to have so my exposure is going to be plus 1.4 and already you can see here now that the detail is coming out below on the uh, the rocks which is what I want to be interested in contrast for me it was too much it's a very contrasty scene so I want to drop the contrast in relation to that and now you see some of the detail coming out here on these rocks the next thing I wanted to look at was my highlights so again I was lucky this exposure was okay uh, my shadows I can bring those up now if I go all the way up to 100 for argument's sake you can see all this detail here within these rocks and you know there's some really nice textures and I love the way the water as well is just motioning and I also like how the light is reflecting off of this as well but what I want to do is not go to 100 but I am going to add quite a lot 
on the shadows. So I'm going to go to 75 on the shadows. Uh, on my whites now, I want to increase those, which might be counterproductive. But when you look here at what the result will give me, it'll actually not overly affect the image, just brightens it up that tad bit more. And I then want to drop my blacks because I want to be a very moody image, like I would have said from the outset. Texture, I could add some into that. It's going to give, you know, texture on the rocks, as you can see here. But, you know, I think only a tiny amount is going to be needed for this. And I generally don't use texture and I generally don't use clarity, but I used it on this occasion. A touch of clarity here, I'm going to bring it up to 12. And dehaze, I don't need to have any dehaze. If I bring it in here, as you can see, it does darken down the sky where it brings everything else down here also. So I'm going to wait and see if I'm going to do anything different in relation to that. And then from a vibrance point of view, I just want to give that a bit more color. So I'm going to bring it up by 35. So not long spent on that one here, but the main thing for me is when I get to the, uh, the next steps. So the next steps here is something I haven't shown you guys before, which is utilizing the tone curve. Now you can catch here, which is effectively like your histogram and you can affect your shadows, you can affect your midtones, and you can affect your highlights. But what I want to do is I want to be able to kind of more or less match what I'm seeing here. So if I bring this line up, to this part, which is what's showing me on the dark ends. I'm going to drop this slightly, and you look at the image, you'll see how this is affecting the image. And then I'm going to give this more or less a slight bit of an S curve. I'm going to drop this one down small, a little bit more. And now what it's doing to the histogram is it's giving me more data to be able to play around with within that image. So from that point of view, I want to um, then move on to an area which I hadn't done before, again, on behind the raw, but I want to add more of a color into this image. So I'm going to look at here um, on, you've got for argument's sake, your, your midtones, your shadows and your highlights. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to affect my shadows more so, but I want to have a bit of color on those shadows. And like I said, I want it to be very cold. So I can go all the way here for argument's sake. And the more I go here, the more greeny, the more blue that it can go. And you can see here that it's changing the image, but obviously to something which is unrealistic. So what I want to do is just add a small bit of blue to this image here. And by bringing that to just around here, you can start to see now that this water, if I look at the before, and the after, you can see the warm or the cooling of the water here going more of a blue tone, blue aqua tone, which is what I want to try and achieve. And then from this, I want to move on to my detail panel. Now on sharpening here, okay, like there is always 40% or 40 added in um, on the default within Lightroom. But for me, I think it's a bit too much. I'm going to drop it down to 25. And I'm also then as well going to change around on my masking. So when I look at my masking here, I've more, the more I increase my mask, the, the less it's going to affect. So if I hold down Option and then bring my mask up, all screen will go white, and then I can see what this is going to affect. If I apply sharpening in general, it's going to sharpen all these areas up here that doesn't necessarily need sharpening. So I want to sharpen purely onto the rocks. So if I bring this up here and you start looking at the screen, the areas that are white are the only ones now that are going to be applying sharpening. So like I said, I want no sharpening here and I want no sharpening there. So if we continue to go up here, you bring it to, let's, let's say we go all the way up here, okay? It's only going to apply sharpening to those refined edges. So I'm going to bring it to just a bit here, I think. Yeah, probably around about 60, 65. Yeah, 65 will do me perfectly fine. Um, and from that point of view then, like when I look at this image, it's very, very close. Now, looking at my histogram again the whole time, it might seem it's quite bright here, but I have no issue because my highlights are not blown. Now, on the next step then that I want to look at is say, okay, go into my lens correction. Now, as default, but it's generally okay to do it anyway, but check it that your um, chromatic aberration has been clicked and that your profile corrections as well. Now, if I look at profile corrections here and take this off, you see that we more of a bulbous image. That's because I was shooting at 16 mil, and this is a 30 second shot at F13. Now, if I click on uh, profile corrections, now it removes that bow effect and gives you a flatter image on a horizon point of view. So much, much easier to be able to work with, and it's something that Lightroom does do, but just make sure that it is uh, done for when you want it on your own images. And then on this here, um, sorry, on my effects, this is where you can add a vignette. And for me, I want to add a vignette because within this whole area here is the main area that the, the image is going th straight towards. So if I take my highlight priority, which is going to bring whiter on the outside or darker 
on the outside if you bring it to the left hand side i want to drop that down here just to give it that more of a focal point into the center of the image there's nothing else that i need to do in uh in, in that panel and then on the final panel here i could play around with these and add in more um color into the blues here or i can remove colors as well by utilizing here blue is a very powerful one to be able to play around when you're editing your shot but for me here looking at this i don't need to adjust that i don't think i adjusted it either on my original uh, image and then finally what i want to do is go into my basic panel for a moment and i want to have a look and say okay is there more that i can get out of this image now when i zoom in you can see, like I said a moment ago, I like all of the shapes that are in the rocks. I like the way the light is bouncing off of those rocks. And then over here, it is totally sharp. So there's nothing that I need to be worried about. And what I wanted to do was make sure that when I was getting this image edited, that I had uh, this on the base because it get, forms that nice curve within the overall image. But I do think what I want to try and do is try make it a small bit brighter because everything that i've done here is to try and darken down the image so i want to make it a small bit brighter but just being conscious of my highlights so again keeping an eye on the histogram if i bring that to 1.7 i would say yeah that actually to me is a bit too bright now because i'm seeing all this area here in the center so i'm going to drop that back down actually and i'm going to leave it well alone leave it where it was i could play around here with my shadows just to bring those up again slightly and my whites bring those up again slightly but the histogram is telling me what i can and what i can't do so if i press l here on my keyboard it creates my light box removes everything on the outside so i can get a clearer look at the image if i press l again it just goes completely dark and if i was to press l again it will go back when you're looking at the images as well it's a good rule of thumb you know click on fit so you can fit it within the frame but also when you're looking here you've got some defaults so I can say okay I want to go to 100% now I can start looking at the detail here scrolling around I definitely one thing I didn't do is to look at spot removal to see had I any um, dust spots so if I just grab my usual trick here grab my dehaze drag it all the way up you can see that I don't have but what I do love here and I just leave on this for a moment just to show you because they're really pronounced is these light rays that were coming down here so again if I take my dehaze off okay they're more or less removed so I can add a small tiny bit of dehaze to the overall image and what that's going to do if I bring this back out if I add a small bit of dehaze here it's going to darken the entire image and what I want to do is I want to look at the sky so I'll take this off I'm going to go into my filters i'm going to get to a linear gradient i'm going to drag that i want it very very uh, soft so I'll take it from here drag it to there and then i'm just going to go down here and i'm going to add in a slight amount of dehaze and now we're going to start to see those come through here so yeah that was definitely a challenge to edit um i'm hope that you enjoyed this style of me going through anyway because like i said i played around quite a lot to see what i liked and what i didn't like so i took notes of my settings and then i've just shown you what i've done and my rationale behind it thank you very much as always for watching please join me again next week because i go to an area that i've gone to many many times before and it is something that i would really encourage you to do is to return to a location many many times because you're always going to get different conditions and you're always going to get different shots so hopefully you can join me for next sunday's episode which will be on which is this episode if it, if first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlange